In this tutorial, we're going to talk about JSTL. Uh, this is a page that we uh, wrote in our previous tutorial. So all that this page does is get an object from the request and the object is of type user and then it prints the username. Now there is another way in which we can write this code in a JSP and that's by using JSTL. Uh, before I explain what JSTL is, uh, I'd like to tell you some of the, you know, the reasons why uh, JSTL was introduced. Now, we started out with writing JSPs because it was a pain to write all the HTML code inside a servlet and uh, put each HTML code inside a, a println method. And, um, you know, that was, that was the reason why we actually started writing JSPs so that we can have a HTML based page and uh, we can have Java code in between. Now, it works well for simple HTMLs and simple JSPs, but as your code increases, see I have a lot of script blocks here in my uh, JSP, for example, and uh, let's say I also have uh, HTML tags in between those uh, script blocks. Now, if it increases beyond a particular limit, it becomes very hard to maintain this as well. Maintenance is one of the problems. And then the second problem is that the code here in this page is not pure XML. So these are all XML tags, but then, you know, all the code inside the script block are not XML format. So in order to have a proper XML format and in order to make this a bit more maintainable, we have something called as JSTL that you can use. JSTL helps to write all this Java code as XMLs. And of course, they are actually Java code which are executing, but the way we actually represent that Java code is by using XMLs. So first of all, the whole document will be uh, will be proper XML. And then the second advantage is that it's easier to maintain. Uh, the reason why maintenance is an important criteria here is take any JSP. There is a lot of view logic involved there. It'll probably have some style sheets, it'll have uh, view controls, it'll have alignment data and all that stuff. So it has data about how to present the page to the user. Now, presentation is something that is normally taken care of by a different uh, team or a people with different uh, skill set. Now, these people are usually designers. They come up with uh, HTML templates. They come up with style sheets and things like that. So most of the times, designers would not know how to code in Java. And uh, similarly, most of the Java developers would not know how to implement different designs and, uh, you know, implement different style sheets in order to have a presentable web page. So what I'm saying is that, uh, again, I'm making a generalization here, but most of the times it is common to see that the role of a designer and the role of a Java developer are two separate roles. And it's very rare that you would have a single person who would do both. Now this presents a problem. In your page, if you have Java code as well as HTML code, so there are actually two people working on the same page and this might lead to problems about who's gonna use the page, who's gonna develop the page. First, how are we gonna integrate both the changes, both by uh, the developer and the Java coder? So because of all these things, we have a solution that attempts to solve the problem in a way and uh, that solution is by using JSTLs. And JSTLs are nothing but uh, Java tag libraries that you can use and you can have all these tags here instead of having the script block and uh, writing Java code. And JSTL has become so common now that it's actually considered bad practice to have script blocks inside uh, JSPs. So with that in mind, let's try to learn how to use JSTL. So again, what we're doing here is getting the user attribute from the request object and printing out the username. So let's let's take this step by step. Let's try to replace this script block with JSTL. Now JSTL stands for JSP standard tag libraries. So we have a set of tags that serve the same purpose as the script blocks. So the tag for getting objects from different scopes, like the request session and the application, is called the use bean tag. In order to write any JSTL tag, we need to prefix the tag with a JSP colon. And once you write this JSP colon, Eclipse actually comes up with a list of all the, you know, the available tags. So uh, these are all the JSTL tags. So the one that we're going to use right now is this one, use bean. Okay, so it has prompted uh, 
an ID here. And uh, what is the ID that I give? The ID here has to match the attribute that I'm trying to pull out. Here I'm trying to pull out the attribute user because this is what we have set in our login server. We have set the attribute for this user and we have passed the actual object. So this is what we need to use. Whatever is the get attribute parameter, that needs to be the ID here. So what this does is, it, so we are telling JSTL, we are telling this tag to pull up the object of this particular attribute. Now we can add a few more parameters here. Uh, the next parameter that I want to add, if you do a control space, you will see all the list of uh, available parameters. It's uh, again Eclipse doing the um, suggestion. Now here we have something called as a class. Now the class is something that we can specify to tell JSTL what is the type of object that we, get, we are getting from uh, this particular attribute. Now, how does it work in a scriptlet block? We actually import this class and then we take this object and we cast it. So instead of casting it here, we are actually telling the tag that this is the object that we're going to get out of this so that the tag automatically casts it for us. So I have to give the complete, uh, the full qualifying name here. Okay, so this has the complete package name and the class name. So this tells JSTL that whatever object that I'm gonna get for this particular attribute is gonna be of this class. Okay, now this is done. Now the last thing we need to do is to get, is to tell JSTL what is the scope where we need to pull the value from. Here we have done a request.get attribute. So this information needs to be sent to JSTL. Is this user attribute available in the request or the session or the application or the page? We need to tell it that. So there is this attribute here, scope. As you can see, it's set to page, which is the default if you do not enter anything here. But in our case, we need to get the value from the request. So I'll enter request here. That's it. So now what we have done in this JSTL tag is equivalent to this. Okay, so I can remove this. And uh, now let me save this. Now if I run this, I'm, I note that I'm not making a change here. I'm still using this uh, script tag here to print out the value. I'm just using this JSTL tag to actually get the object from the request. And we are printing the username using a script block. So let's run this. I will run the login page. We need to log in so that uh, we have, you know, the attribute in the request. Okay, now it's working just fine. So we have successfully replaced this particular script block, this particular script block with this JSTL tag. But note one thing here. Let's look at all the things that we have done in the script block. Uh, we have got the attribute. We have passed what is the attribute. We have mentioned what is the scope of that attribute. We have mentioned what is the object which we get from that attribute and we have mentioned what is a variable that will hold that object. Now let's look at what we have done in our tag. We have passed the attribute, which is fine. We have passed the scope, which is here. And we have passed what object to cast this as, which is fine. But we have not passed the variable name here. Now how is the variable name being figured out here? The variable name here is same as the attribute name. So JSTL automatically takes this attribute name to be the same as the variable name. Now say for example, I have this user attribute in the request and say I have another uh, user attribute in the session, for example. This would not work in JSTL because JSTL is doing this assumption for us. It's, uh, it's taking this attribute name and it is setting the variable name also to be the same as the attribute name, which is why, I'll remove this, which is why this works. 
This is actually doing a user dot get username. Now, what is this user object? The user object is this object that we've declared here. So even though we have not defined the name of this object, it's taken the name to be the same as the, um, the attribute name that we've declared here. Now, so now that we have um, replaced that first script block with JSTL, let's try to replace this uh, script output block with JSTL as well. Now, now, in order to print any property of uh, the objects that we have caught from this, uh, you know, from the use bean, we need to use another JSTL tag. Let me remove this. Or let me leave this here. I'll add a new line. Okay, so again, JSP colon. And uh, the tag that we're going to use is this one, get property. The get property is used to get the property values of the beans that you have defined using the use bean tag. It takes two parameters, one is the property and one is the name. So the name, you know, it tells this tag what is the bean that it needs to look at and the property tells the tag what is the property that, you know, that uh, needs to be pulled out. So the name here is same as the name that we have defined here, which is user and the property is the property that we need to print off this user object. And the property is actually the get username. So username, I'm, I'm specifying the property itself. I'm not specifying the getter. It actually calls the getter, but all this needs as input is the property name. And uh, since I'm using, since I've specified username here, it's actually gonna do a get username. It's gonna call the getter internally of this object that we have defined here. So let me remove this and I'll save this. I'll submit this again. And here we see the new hello message. Okay, just a quick note about uh, the use bean tag before we wind up. Here in this case, we have used the use bean tag in order to get an object from uh, the scope that we have mentioned here. Uh, but use bean tag interestingly works to set objects as well. How this works is, uh, say for example, I have this user and uh, I'm getting the uh, attribute from the request object. Now, in case we had not, uh, you know, mentioned this uh, set attribute here, let's say that the user attribute was not available in the request object. So in that case, the use bean tag here actually sets the object. So first it checks if the object is available with this particular attribute and this particular scope. If it's there, it's gonna get this, but if it's not there, it actually creates a new bean with the scope and uh, it calls the bean with this name and that bean belongs to this class. And when it comes to creating a new object, another handy feature that the use bean tag provides us, uh, let's say I have, uh, I don't have this user in the request scope. Now it's creating for the first time. Now what happens is, whatever code you enter in between these, uh, in this tag will be executed when the object is being created. Now, if the object is already there, whatever code you write here will be ignored. But if this, if it's not there, if you don't have a user attribute of this request scope, then whatever you write here will be executed after creating the object of the user attribute in the request scope. So I can have a JSP colon set property. Now the signature of the set property is similar to the get property, but uh, the only new thing that we need to add here is the value that we are setting. So I can have the same thing here. And I can set value as new user. So what's gonna happen is if the use bean finds this object, then it's gonna retrieve that. Only if it does not find the object, it's gonna create a new object of user and it's gonna create, uh, and it's gonna set the value of the username as new user this time. So it will not have the value that we have passed. Success.jsp. Now there you can see the scope did not have the user object. So it actually created a new user object and it gave the name as new user and we see a new user displayed.